Sheldon Richmond. As many of you already know, Sheldon Richmond is vice president of the Future of Freedom Foundation and editor of FFF's monthly journal, The Future of Freedom. He's also a fellow at the Center for a Stateless Society and always a pleasure to speak to. Thank you so much for being on, Sheldon. It's good to see you again. Great to be with you. Always happy to. All right, so as many people already know, uh, we've got this standoff in Nevada with the rancher Cliven Bundy, who is going up against the Bureau of Land Management because his cattle have been grazing on public land and he has not been paying a grazing fee. Libertarians have taken up this issue as well as conservatives saying that he has the right to use the land. And even if he doesn't have the right to use the land, the Bureau of Land Management has no authority to come in armed and confiscate his cattle over an unpaid bill. So we have recent, uh, recent developments in this case. Cliven Bundy was interviewed with the New York Times and said some pretty nasty things about race. What does this even have to do with the case? And is this just a gotcha moment for a publication like the New York Times? Well, yeah, there's a lot of issues wrapped up in this uh, regarding the race. I mean, he said some truly appalling things about blacks and slavery and stuff like that. And it just makes you cringe. Uh, and of course, there, there definitely will be people who want to then use that to, to discredit the, uh, the position he's taking on land and, 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 and anyone else who has come, uh, who has defended him against the federal government. And, ge and generally, they want to use it against anybody who's suspicious of the federal government. I mean, this has been an old story on the part of, uh, you know, certain uh, people, progressives, who, uh, who have, uh, I think, argue in bad faith, uh, rather than arguing the merits of these particular issues, they just want to say, well, these are, these are just a bunch of racists. So Bundy has not helped us, let's, let's put it that way. Uh, so that, that's uh, one sad uh, part of this. Uh, the other thing is we, we could look at uh, his, uh, his own position on land uh, itself, and see that he's not uh, taking a libertarian position, uh, which I'll, I'll be glad to go into if you'd like me to. Yeah, no, I, I think that's very important to go into. Yeah, right. He's been grazing on uh, federally held land in Nevada. No, the federal government holds about 80 percent of the state of Nevada. <laughs> right. And it, uh, it came in under rather shady circumstances. If you read some history about it, which I was doing this morning, uh, this comes in... Uh, uh, before 1864, where the uh, uh, Lincoln Republicans won another state in the Union uh, in case uh, uh, that'll be Republican, that in case uh, the, the, uh, the presidential election of 1864 gets thrown to the House of Representatives. So uh, there and so they uh, it's it's uh, it's shaky to begin with. And, and like I said, the, U the U.S. Uh, claimed uh, almost all the state uh, for military purposes. So it's <laughs> it's got to make a libertarian laugh. But Bundy, from what I understand, and I'm relying here on Will Grigg, the great uh, uh, blogger at uh, Pro Libertate, libertarian blogger, who has uh, been on the scene at Bunkerville, Nevada, has talked uh, to, uh, to Bundy and other people. And Bundy uh, uh, told him that he, he has no objection to paying grazing fees uh, to the state and local governments. And he would comply with a sheriff's order, a local sheriff's order regarding that. His objection is to the, uh, what, as he puts it, the constitutionality of the of federal jurisdiction, national government jurisdiction over, uh, over that land. Uh, and so, uh, so there's that issue. There's also the issue of whether the U.S. should have been seeking a an armed confrontation. I mean, they sent a heavily armed uh, group of, uh, of, uh, of officers uh, to him. Uh, there was confiscation of livestock, which I think now has been returned to him. Uh, things have kind of gotten diffused, at least temporarily, uh, rather than just sort of filing a civil case against him at the, you know, uh, at, the, at the most. So there are a lot of issues here. But uh, the, I, he, to my knowledge, he doesn't claim to be a libertarian. He's not taking a libertarian position on the land question. And so it's of interest to libertarians. But, you know, it's not like one of our own sure. uh, making a stand on behalf of a libertarian uh, position. Sure. I mean, I know looking at this, I, I feared greatly that this would become another Waco or another Ruby Ridge or something like that. Uh, I, I think you and many others probably did the same. I feel like this is just something that everyone should be against. And I, I, it absolutely boggles my mind that anyone would think that it's a good thing 
that the federal government, whether it be to collect a debt or whether it be to enforce any law, should be bringing military police into a situation like this and creating a standoff such as this. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree. Uh, and it looks like cooler heads have prevailed, on the, at least on the, on the federal side. And, uh, and, and so far, things, I don't, know what, I don't know where it stands exactly, but I, as, I, as I, under, I do understand that the livestock has been returned, so we'll see, what, see how this goes. There is a larger issue here, which uh, I think is a, a, an indictment of the conservatives who have rallied to Bundy's uh, position. Uh, namely, that this was Sh Western Shoshone land. This was Indian land. And they were there was a treaty, you know, in the 19th century between the Shoshones and the federal government, which was supposed to respect their their land rights in return for some considerations, I guess, I don't know, access or roadways, roads through it. Uh, and but uh, as Greg points out in a, in a very good blog post today on his site, uh, the um, the federal government, of course, reneged on it and has uh, basically pushed them on the reservations and. And there, there's been one family, two sisters and a brother named Dan, D-A-N-N, -N, who have been fighting them for years, or in, you know, in recent years, but fighting them over a period of years. One of the sisters has, has died now. They're old. They're in their 80s, I think. Uh, they're very poor. They don't have running water or electricity. And they've been treated, you know, very badly by the federal government. But, you know, where were the rallies? Where was the Tea Party? Where was Sean Hannity when all that was going on? Uh, so, so it, it, you know, I think they are vulnerable to a criticism. Like Absolutely. That. Uh, you know, where was where was Bundy? I mean, I don't know that he'd said anything about the Shoshones before this, although the Shoshones have come to his defense. Mm -hmm. They're showing magnanimity and actually uh, expressing sympathy for his position. That does bring up a kind of a troubling question, doesn't it? When there have been native tribes battling for land rights with the federal government, and, uh, you know, like you said, where are the militias? Where, where, where are the conservatives? Well, you know, uh, when these land, every once in a while, discussion of uh, the Indians pops up, even among libertarians, and people will say, uh, well, you know, what, what can you do? You really can't restore the land so many years afterwards. You know, there's been so much built up on it and reliance. And, you know, at most, maybe there should be a monetary settlement. But how can you possibly return the land? But here's a, a very interesting case. This is fair. This is basically vacant land, right? I mean, it's the military that has used this for nuclear tests more than I think any other site in the world. Uh, and so it's just military. It's not like there are towns and, you know, big cities that would have to be uprooted. It's just the government getting out of there. So well, this seems like a perfect case to return the land to the Indians. Absolutely, absolutely. Is public land, because I've heard this argument, is public land the closest thing we have to a true commons, a true common land, uh, land for use for everyone, for a, a nominal fee paid into taxes or whatever, um, that we have? And if you answer that question, then... Does government have any kind of right to own land? Well, I don't see how the government can have a right to own land because, in my in my view, the government doesn't have a right to exist. So I think that already knock, that knocks out any right to own anything, right? If somebody doesn't have a right to exist or something doesn't have a right to exist, it can hardly have a right to own sure. anything. I think ownership comes comes with uh, existence. <laughs> so uh, you know, they grabbed the land uh, back then, in the right in the nineteenth century. Uh, they didn't ask the permission of the Shoshones. They just took it and dictated terms to them uh, and even, you know, entered into phony treaties. Uh, so it's illegitimate from the start. And uh, and it seems to me the proper libertarian position isn't that therefore it should sell it off because it has no right to it in the first place. And why do you have a right to sell off uh, uh, stolen property? We know who the owners are. We know who the descendants of the owners are. And, and so it's uh, I, I see really no problem in just letting them have it. Uh, and let them be free. If they want it to be separate from the United States, that's their perfect right to do. I don't, I don't know what they want. Uh, so no, they don't. They don't have, the government doesn't have a right to have to own it. It can't own it in the name of the public because that just means a bunch of politicians and bureaucrats are the true owners. They get to dictate how it's used. And, you know what say does the public have? Voting for the office holders. That's already very remote from what the Bureau of Land Management is going to do. And the government obviously just uses it for its own purposes, military uh, uh, tests and, and whatnot. And then when it needs fees, so it lets uh, ranchers graze cattle 
in return for the money. So it wants it wants the money. It doesn't return the money to the taxpayers. So we, even if it was hold, even if we buy the theory that it's holding it in the name of the taxpayers, how come we're not seeing the money? How come the taxpayers aren't seeing the money? So the whole that whole framework, I think, is uh, is uh, you know riddled with fallacy. Sure, sure. Everyone has had an opinion on this. Uh, whenever people like Chris Hayes and Rachel Maddow put forth their opinion, I was disgusted at first. Um, when Sean Hannity put forward his opinion, I agreed with him at first, but it seems that all of it sort of melts into an interesting gray area. And I think that you've, you've put forward that idea fairly well. It's difficult to come up with a coherent thought about this because it's just so complex, whether you talk about native rights to the land, you talk about how you know Bundy doesn't care about the native rights to the land and he's using up other people's land, even though the federal government doesn't have the right to own the land, etc. So even though you've already done a really good job, I think, of, of, of summing this up, what is, in your opinion, the correct position to take on this? Not siding with Bundy, not siding with the government. What, what's your take? I, I think the Shoshone claim is unequivocal, and we don't even have the problem, like I said, of uh, of a hundred years or more of development. And you know, what do you do to the people who were innocent, right? Who just simply inherited the land or bought the land later on and didn't have any hand in stealing it? And you know, they built it up and they've invested. Uh, you know, there, there are tough questions there. What do you do a hundred years or more after a land theft? Uh, and, and I don't have easy answers to that. But this this seems to not be encumbered by those problems, since this is not occupied by by just private citizens, right, who have in, who invested uh, over the years. This is the government, and uh, you know, I guess there's some military installations out there, and a lot of it's uh, just open field or land or whatever that they've uh, you know blown up uh, nuclear devices on, and then they have some grazing areas that they that they then lease. But the Shoshones, you know, have been screwed. I mean, the, the, after the land was taken from the Shoshones, it was then leased to private gold miners. So gold miners were making profits off the land that uh, they shouldn't have been allowed to lease because it wasn't the owners who leased it. And the government, you know, made some payment to the Shoshones back in, uh, I don't know, the 19th century, uh, I don't know, about a million dollars an acre or something like that. But the Shoshones turned it down because they didn't want to sell. And yet the, the, the federal government accepted it on behalf of them. And, you know, is holding it, I don't know, holding it in trust or something for them. But they don't want to sell. So that's why they didn't accept the, accept the money in the first place. So to me, the right position is it ought to be the Shoshone. So even, even uh, uh, Bundy's claim to it is not, is not any good. And also, like I said, Bundy seems to have no objection if the state and the local governments were governing that land. His objection is the feds because he thinks it's unconstitutional. Hmm. Well, and as many people know, you... Uh you raise doubt about the legitimacy of the Constitution as well, the, um, the uh, Lysander Spooner position. Right, right. I don't think that you're, you're usually not going to win that argument. Uh, I like to say that uh, I, I lift this line from the great movie War Games. Uh, you know, the only winning move in the constitutional game, the only winning move is not to play. Uh, they're going to interpret the Constitution, and they can, uh, in a way that uh, serves the uh, interests of power. And uh, it's going to be a rare time when it actually doesn't go that direction. I mean, occasionally it doesn't if there's some big public uh, uh, outcry. But but by and large, a case like this uh, will go against him, and he'll he'll end up uh, losing anyway. But the Shoshone, who I think were are the real victims here, uh, are not getting any consideration. Sure, sure. Well, Sheldon Richmond, always, always coming through with a well reasoned and erudite argument. Thank you so much for being on. Uh, I, I have learned so much, and I'm sure everyone watching has learned a ton. And hopefully when they talk about this issue, uh, they will be a little bit more enlightened thanks to what you've said today. Thanks so much. Well, thanks. My pleasure. Anytime. All right. All right. Have a great day.